action. Joining me now live is Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois. Senator Durbin, thanks for being here. One thing that the Republicans say that does seem uh, to have some res resonance is President Obama's message is, I'm not negotiating. I'm not negotiating. I'm not negotiating. That's just not how this works. They point out that there have been previous negotiations over both opening the government and the debt ceiling. Why is it so unreasonable to expect some sort of negotiation? Because the president remembers what happened two years ago when the Republicans again threatened not to extend the debt ceiling. It was devastating to our economy. It took money out of our economy, out of people's savings account and retirement. It jeopardized the credit rating of the United States of America for the first time in history. The president said this president and no president should ever face that kind of blackmail. He said he'll negotiate, but only after we've reopened the government and paid our bills. But surely you agree that regardless of how we got in here, we are now in this situation. You can see John Boehner. Maybe you would be a better speaker than John Boehner if you had stayed in the House and the Democrats had kept the House. But you're, you're watching him. You understand he can't bring nothing back to his caucus. There needs to be some sort of deal. You understand the politics of this. Uh, why is just denying Boehner anything, even things that you know, for example, President Obama has offered before, such as uh, tweaks to uh, entitlement or social welfare programs, such as a promise for tax reform. Uh, why is that so unreasonable? There was a headline in one of the local Hill newspapers which said the Republicans don't know how to get out of this mess. They really have reached a point. I mean, remember what they started off by saying? Senator Cruz said this is all about defunding Obamacare. We haven't heard that in a while, have we? I mean, what's happened here is the Republican script keeps changing. They're trying to find an end game, and they can't find it. Let me tell you what the end game should be, and it should be an honest one. Reopen the government, pay our bills, and then we'll sit down and discuss all of these things. The president has said that. I would say that. Let's have a meaningful discussion about our deficit, about health care, about the farm bill, put it all on the table. But whether or not you feel like you have the moral high ground and Senator and President Obama feels like he has the moral high ground and Senator Reid feels like you have the moral high ground, at the end of the day, we are all in this right now and they need, if you say he needs a way out of it, Boehner needs a way out of it, fine. He needs a way out of it. We get it. Their approval ratings are far worse than the Democrats' approval ratings or President Obama's approval ratings. But we are all in this. The government is not opening. Uh, veterans are not getting their checks. Uh, there, are, there are kids who depend on formula with, through the WIC program. Right. And we need a way out of this, not to mention the debt ceiling. Why is the Democratic Party not doing anything to acknowledge the reality of where we are and trying to figure out a way to get out of it together. It doesn't matter how we got here to a degree. We're here. Now what? Well, Jake, I think uh, you probably would guess, and it would be true, there are conversations underway as to what we will discuss, you know, what we will negotiate over, what things will be on the table. But what we said is open the government, pay our bills, and then let's have this honest conversation. Think about this. We're going to face this regularly. The next time this continuing resolution, temporary spending bill, expires, the next time we have to extend the debt ceiling for bills we've already incurred, this is going to come over and over again. And if each time we lay off 800,000 federal workers or end up interrupting the services of this government, or jeopardizing our international credit rating, it's disastrous for a great country like America. The president is trying to establish a standard of conduct that is reasonable and bipartisan and puts everything on the table. I think that's the way to approach it. Senator, Obamacare has been rolled out in the last week. It's, it's hard to argue that it's been a, a, a super success. Uh, I don't know what you're hearing in Illinois, but what we're hearing here is that people are still having a lot of problems getting onto the website, signing up. There is a mandate that individuals get this health insurance by the end of the year, even if they can't get onto the website. What is so crazy about delaying the individual mandate, oh, no. giving the, given the fact that so many people are having trouble even getting in and signing up? Jake, the reason why the people, and I've been online because members of Congress are going to be buying their health insurance through these insurance right. exchanges. I went online and I was able to price it. Now I'm going to pay more in my income category. Of course I should. But those who are in the middle and lower income categories are getting premiums that they can't believe they are so low. Why are they so low? Because there'll be a mandate that says everybody has to buy health insurance. And what that, unless you're satisfied with what you have, 
everybody has to have health insurance, at least through the exchange. Why does it make a difference? If the insurance pool is just open to those who are really sick, imagine what the premiums will be. We want everyone in the pool. I had a meeting yesterday with a they surgeon. They can't get on the pool though, Senator. Well, the, the... but let me explain this to you. We have nine million people who've already tried to get online. I think the number is even higher. I met yesterday with a surgeon from Boston who's well known. Uh, Tool Gawande is his name. He's a prominent author. And I said, how did the Massachusetts plan, Romney Care, how did that get started? Oh, he said, we had some problems at the beginning with our internet getting online. But once that was smoothed out, it's 98% of Massachusetts residents now have health insurance. So let's not let a few glitches at the beginning sour the ultimate goal of giving people who have never been able to afford health insurance, never had health insurance, this kind of protection for the first time in their lives. I would argue it's more than a few glitches, but before you go, Senator Durbin, I want to ask you, you mentioned something a few minutes ago about conversations that have started about where this might ultimately lead. What can you tell us about that? Are these bipartisan conversations? Oh, yes. Yes, they are. And, of course, we've kind of made it clear we're open to these conversations. Once you open the government, once we pay our debts, we're ready to do it. And I've, you know, some of us have some credibility, some cred, if you will, with the folks on the other side. We've worked with them on bipartisan measures like immigration reform and student loan reform and the farm bill. We can work together on a bipartisan basis. I don't know what's going to happen in the House, but the Senate ought to roll up its sleeves and get to work on this. All right, Senator Dick Durbin, with cred, I appreciate you keeping <laughs> it real. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.